Hey everybody. Um, so Emily from Gloria Marketing here, um, and Amy had asked me if I would record a quick video um, just talking about Facebook ads and how to set them up. Um, so just a, a word of note here um, is that uh, this is a pretty basic video. Um, I would say if you have Facebook Business Manager or Ads Manager, I would absolutely go through that um, instead of through Ad Center. Uh, but this is kind of your basic uh, new to Facebook ads video, um, just to give you a couple of tips and tricks. Um, but again, if you have Facebook Business Manager and you're familiar with it, um, absolutely go through Business Manager instead of Ad Center. Uh, but a lot of the tips and tricks still apply. So let me share my screen here. All right. So this is the ad center on uh, Facebook. Um, so if you went to your Facebook page, right? Um, so I'm on mine right now. And then you go over to ad center. Then you uh, hit create ad and you have all of these options here. Um, I would say I generally don't tend to boost posts. Um, I haven't found great success in boosting posts for the most part. Uh, mostly because that, um, unless your goal is to get likes on a specific post, um, then you'll, you'll tend to get better results by finding something that's a little bit more targeted to your goals. Um, if you are going through business manager, you might get some, uh, some different options here as well. Um, the ones that I tend to go towards, the, the one that I tend to go towards the most is more website visitors. Uh, but if you have a shop-based business, the website purchases uh, tab might be helpful as well. Um, the rest of these are, you know, boosting a specific post or ones that are more general, like I want to get more messages or I just want to promote my page in general. But I think for the most part, we're, if we're spending money on advertising, we're probably wanting to try to get people to our website. So I'm going to say get more website visitors. And this is where you will build your ad. Um, I like to suggest using the carousel format because um, this gives you multiple options to kind of create different cards. Um, so let's say, right, we have this one and I'll create a second one. I'm just kind of showing you what it would look like. So obviously I would pick different images for each of these, right? Um, but what's nice is that you're able to have a headline on each of these that's different. So I might say, um, you know, your partner in evangelization on one, right? And so this is telling me that this is a little bit long, right? That this would get cut off in some of the different um, types of feeds. So that's why I like to build posts right in the ad center uh, because it gives you kind of this heads up and then that way you're not spending all the time building a post and realizing it might not work. Um, so let's say or an evangelization, right? And I would obviously select a different image. Um, then if I went to the second one, maybe I would say something like um, copy writing and email. So that ended up being one character too long, but you get the idea, right? So you can write different things here. Um, and what's helpful is that it picks the card that ends up performing the best, right? So let's say card number two is the one that's making people click over to the website the most. Um, it'll make sure that one shows up first in the future posts, in the future showings of the ad. The text is what ends up showing up here. Right now, I will say that, that Facebook is going to tell you to try to make it short, um, but almost all of these successful Facebook ads that I've seen end up being pretty long. Um, I'm sure you've seen these come up in your newsfeed before and they're just like paragraphs and paragraphs. Um, so I don't really know why they suggest keeping it short, um, because really you normally need much more than 90 characters to get across whatever it is that you're trying to uh, promote on Facebook. So find, I would say find a sweet spot. I, I personally get a little bit annoyed when they're paragraphs and paragraphs and take a long time to read. Um, but, you know, 
sometimes it's, you know, really helpful. Maybe you do have just kind of a short snappy point and go for it, uh, but don't feel like you're necessarily limited to the character length that they're saying here. Um, it will auto populate with something, but you can, you know, just go in and, and edit that. All right, your call to action is what this button here is gonna say on your carousel card. And you can do this just with a single image. You can also do a video or a slideshow um, and you'll still have the option to you know, pick this uh, call to action button and change the text, uh, but you'll only have one headline instead of multiple. So they give you a bunch of different options um, and it really just depends, I would say, find the one that has the closest uh, action that you're looking for, right? So if you are a shop, I would say probably shop now, um, but if you're more of a service-based business, probably something like learn more, um, unless it's like a sign up, right? You could be uh, marketing that you have a free resource if you you know, put in your, your email address, right? So all of those different things, um, you know, find the one that's the closest to what you want people to do. Special ed category only counts uh, legally if you have, you know, something really specific, um, you know, one of these three things, right? Um, which I think probably most of us don't fall into this category, so you probably don't have to worry about that. All right, targeting. I would say this is the most important part of setting up a Facebook ad. Um, as you can see, it starts out very general, um, but you really want to make it much more specific. So um, you can either create a new audience if it's something you think you'll go back to, or you can just go right in and edit and you can save it later. All right, this is my favorite part of Facebook ads is how detailed slash creepy you can get. Don't think about the creepy part. Um, so obviously you can pick gender, age, all that kind of stuff. Um, I generally tend to bump the age up a little bit, um, mostly because if you're selling something, most 18 year olds are probably not going to be in your category. Um, they might be though. So, you know, can definitely consider the age, but for the most part, I normally tend to bump it up to like 21 or 22. Um, and I assume that people probably have a better shot of being able to spend money on something like a, a Catholic t-shirt or something like that. All right, your location, um, my location, um, and you have to specify some sort of location. Um, so I just usually say United States, um, but you can also go really specific, right? You can drop a pin, um, I'm way too far out right now, but I can drop a pin and cool. <laughs> right, um, but you, you definitely don't need to drop a pin if you don't want to, you could just say United States. But that targeting is helpful if you are doing something that's very local or if you don't have shipping, you, you know, something like that. All right, your detailed targeting. This is what I love. Pretty much anything you can think of, there is a way to target on it. Now, that being said, you have to get very creative with your targeting. Um, so I have found through trial and error that if you try to just target Catholics, um, you're going to get a whole bunch of comments on your post that just say amen. Um, it's a very cultural thing. Um, and it, while it's sweet, um, that's not really the, the type of engagement that you're looking for, right? Um, so we have to think about what do Catholics generally like, right? We have to get a little bit stereotypical here. Um, so some of my favorites that I use, uh, our good friend, Scott Hahn, uh, what else we've got? Bishop Barron, uh, of course, Word on Fire. So think kind of these big Catholic ministries, right? But they're they're big, but also at the same time, you're probably a much more devoted Catholic, right? If you like Scott Hahn on Facebook, than your Christmas and Easter Catholic. Right, so if you're looking for your kind of devoted Catholics, um, you know this is a, a way to go. Another thing I like to suggest is targeting Catholic colleges. Right, so I'll go with uh, Christian, Christian um, like spell, Christian um College, um, Franciscan. Right. 
So these are all listed as interests, right? So this is probably, so it says, so people who have expressed an interest in or like pages related to Christendom College. Now, not every college is listed and not every organization is listed, right? So if I type in Lorium Marketing, yeah, no, I'm not big enough to <laughs> warrant this. So it's got to be a big enough institution. Um, you know, even my, the, the college that I work for uh, full-time is not, you can't have an interest in it, unfortunately. I do, but um, that's not one of the, the options here. Now, the other really important thing is that you can target people based on their job descriptions as well. So let's say priest. Now, I would not have somebody whose interest is being a priest, right? You want to find, and of course, it's not going to come up for me. Oh, priest for life is another good one to, to target as well. Um, so instead, I'm going to go into browse. And so we've got demographics, interests, and behaviors. So interests is where all of these were coming from, right? But demographics, I can pull down into work and I can go to job titles and I can say priest. Right? And of course it's not gonna show up. So every once in a while it tries to be a little bit difficult. Let's try youth minister, youth minister. All right, now, once you have one of these, once you get one of these job titles, hit suggestions, Oh, hey, here we go. This is what we're looking for, right? Okay, church administrator. So if you're trying to target people who work for a church, right, start out with your youth minister because that's one that'll come up pretty automatically. And then you can go church administrator, pastoral assistant. Oh, now this person is saying that their employer is a pastor, which is an interesting thing. So throw it in there. Why not? employer is the Catholic church, right? Um, so you're probably going to get either pastors or, um, you know, people, lay ministers for the church, right? And now all of this depends on what you're trying to target, right? If you are not trying to target somebody who, um, you know, works at a church, then you wouldn't pick any of these, right? But just to show you that you can really drill down, um, but you have to just know how to search for it, right? So you saw before when I typed in youth minister or uh, priest, it wasn't coming up. But once I drilled down and got into the job titles through suggestions, that's when they started to come up, right? And so it's basing it off of what I have here, right? So I have Christian M College. Oh, hey, here's St. Thomas Aquinas College, right? That's similar, right? Now this is targeting people who went to St. Thomas Aquinas, right? So you just have to see what the uh, kind of indicator is over on the side. Another really helpful thing that you can do is, let's say, um, Facebook page admins. So this is really helpful, right? Let's say you're trying to target um, other Catholic ministries, right? So I can't necessarily drill down and say that they're a Facebook page admin of a Catholic church, right? But I am able to... Um, help myself in this process, right? And the way that you do that is through narrowing your audience. I almost always end up narrowing my audience because let's say somebody likes Franciscan because they live in Steubenville, right? Or they like Scott Hahn because, I don't know, they read a book of his or something, but they're not like super into this, right? Or even just because somebody works for a church doesn't necessarily mean that they're super Catholic, right? So what I do is I then, so like if I had all of these, I would probably put my job titles and employers in one bucket and the additional interests in another, right? So I would take out these job title people and end up putting them down here, right? Or like we talked about before, I would put my Facebook page admins over here, right? Because now what this is saying is they have to have one of these qualifications, right? They either have to work for the Catholic church or have one of these job titles or like one of these things, right? And they also have to be a Facebook page administrator. Now, again, this is not guaranteeing that the Facebook page they administer is related to Catholicism, but you've got a much better shot of it being so than just targeting on Facebook page admins or just targeting on people who like these things. 
So if you're a Catholic social media marketer, right, you're going to want to, um, you know, kind of give yourself as much uh, possibility of reaching the people that you want to reach as possible, right? Um, and so I, I highly encourage you just as you have time someday, because um, that's all we have, right? Um, you know, is to just go through these and just kind of familiar, familiarize yourself with some of these categories, right? And maybe you're not looking for something specifically Catholic. Um, there's some that are, um, you know, somebody who has an anniversary within the next 90 days, right? Or um, I know there's some that um, are even like somebody has a birthday that they're related to, right? Um, so there, there's all these different things like, oh, people who returned from travels a week ago, how do they know that? I don't want to know, right? Uh, but there's all these categories that really help you to, to drill down and figure out who you're trying to look for, right? Oh, I'm looking for, here we go. Here's our Facebook page admins, right? Um, you know, they, they kind of drill it down for other categories. Unfortunately, uh, Catholic pages is not one of them, right? But even the, the operating system they, they use or they're small business owners, right? So there's, there's ways that we can really drill down and find as close as possible to the people that we're looking for. You can also exclude people, um, but for the most part, I don't tend to do that. Um, I, I haven't really found a, a good use for excluding anybody. Um, the only thing I might say is like, um, if you don't want people who already like your page or something like that, right? Or um, anything like that. But again, you're kind of getting into discrimination and all that stuff. So I, I tend to not do that. All right. So you essentially want your rating to be somewhere on this green line, right? Um, because you don't want it to be so broad that you're going to be reaching so many people that your ad dollars aren't going to go far enough. Um, but you also don't want it to be so specific. You actually can't run an ad that's in the red zone. Um, you can if it's too broad. You can't if it's in the red zone, at least from what I've discovered from it. Um, so you want to just make sure that you're, you're somewhere in this green zone. I tend to like to try to get it right on the head where it's right down the middle. Um, but pretty much anywhere in this green zone is fine. Then you go ahead and you save your audience. And then you pick your budget, right? Um, I would say spending anything less than $25 on a Facebook ad, you're probably not going to get the bang for your buck that you're looking for. Um, just because it takes Facebook a little bit of time to kind of find the right people for the ad. Um, and so if you have such a small spend, it's not going to end up going nearly as far as you're, as you're hoping it will. Um, that, that's not to say that you can't have a $10 ad that's successful, um, but I, my recommendation is normally $100 on an ad. Uh, and my lowest that I'll normally do with somebody that I'm working with is $50 for an ad. Um, but I, I think you can be successful in the 25 to 50 range, um, as long as you're really careful with your targeting. Um, and I would make it a shorter time frame, um, just so it's like a really quick, punchy campaign. So that is the basics of a Facebook ad. You'd be able to go through here then and see, okay, this is what it would look like on you know, a mobile news feed. You can kind of preview all these different things um, from up here. So that's the, uh, the quick uh, Facebook ads tutorial. Again, I am not an expert in Facebook ads by any means, um, but I've, I've run enough of them for myself and for clients that I've picked up a couple of uh, tips and tricks along the way. So I hope that is helpful. Talk to you soon and God bless.